Hi, I'm Andrew Armstrong, and welcome to the back office teardown lab. I have here another Billy Sastard electronic special, and it's a Sinclair Micro Quartz. It says car clock. He wrote car clock, so I'm guessing this is a clock for your car. Now, it does have a manual in it, and he does say that, unfortunately, it's September 1978. It's almost as old as me. Um, that when he uses it, you push the set button, it kind of works and it basically um, goes off when you let go. So I'm kind of happy, happy, hoping that uh, it is just something to do with, you know, where there's a loose contact and you have to push extra hard and that's what's happening. But let's try to see what's going on here. Interesting design, by the way. It's uh, an ex not even extrusion, it's just a bit of bent metal really and a couple of punched holes, peened um, but it works I've not really seen this sort of design you know, any time recently but why don't things come in packages like that, it'd be easy to recycle so there's a bit of gunk there, I don't know what that's from if it's just if there used to be some sticky sticky stuff to hold the batteries in very kindly has the batteries, that helps an awful lot. Guessing all the interesting things are in there. Just check the positive and negative on these, it's not as clear as most. Whoa, that is tight. When you're sort of bending a bit of 40 year old plastic, it does make you a little bit worried when you just, something is that tight, that is incredibly tight. I mean, look, that's kind of bending the uh, battery bay, trying to push that thing in. I'm kind of a bit worried about the state of these batteries, to be honest with you. Let's measure them first. So there's supposed to be a nominal 1.5 volts, 1.6 volts, so they look okay, they're just a bit old, a bit juicy there, now like you've got this, uh, they've reused their battery clip here as a sort of case ground as well, um, I'm just worried, worried that it's just putting a bit too much force basically on the uh, internals here and if we force it too much we might break something, so just let's test the spring with my tweezers. Yeah, it's kind of all a bit. Mm. Gonna try one more time, and uh, if that doesn't work, I'm certainly gonna come up with some other way of testing this. Again, just double checking that positive and negative. Positive is the green side. Green side positive. Yet yeah, another mnemonic to remember. I can't see it. Whoa! Right, I've lost one. I can't really see though how those would fit. I'm not. I'm, I, I, I honestly don't know how those guys are going to fit in there. So I'm going to take this battery snap instead. Let's put our regular old batteries on it. I'm wondering if that's half the problem then, if it just can't get the old batteries in properly. Assuming this thing works. We're going to try our negative. So that case was actually all negatived up here as well, interestingly. I wonder why they did that then. Not sure if the case itself needs to be, but we'll just hold that here for now. We'll hold that there. Yeah, I'm not seeing anything at all. One last quick sanity check though before we go to the next level. The next level is trying to see if the case needs to be 2.6 volts. I mean. It's not three, but it's not, you know, zero. There is a cap in there too. Right, let's get our positive in. 
So, do you think Clive Sinclair would be ever watching YouTube at some of these and going, No! No! What are you doing? Right. No dice. Oh dearie me, oh dearie me. That's all looking a bit funky in there, isn't it? What is that? Look at that. I don't even know what it is. I cannot figure out if the camera decides to focus. Look at this thing. What is that? There's a cap there and a sort of the gubbins, and there's your screen. But I don't know even what that is. And who knows what lurks on the other side of that PCB. Mm. Let's read that chip off anyway, for those of you who like to play along at home. ICM27, ah, ICM7202 ALG7647. Your guess is as good as mine. But let's try to put a little bit of cleaner on here and I'm going to tilt the board so I don't want to get anything going towards that screen side, that's for sure. It's going a bit shiny now. Got a bit of spare flux clean, I might as well try to get the old glue off. So this will be quite easy to actually reattach. I'm not too worried about any of that side of things. A bit of 3M tape, we're going to be good to go with that. So there's one cap basically in there, one electrolytic. So I think I'm going to just solder something in. When in doubt, Get on the soldering iron. And I'm going to solder in my battery uh, terminals here. And uh, the hope is <laughs> that through the process of soldering <laughs> these terminals, if there's any corrosion on the terminals, they'll just start working again. And uh, if not, either way, I've got a better way of testing this because it's not really working for me right now. Look at that. There's a bit of green on there, but not, not a massive amount. Positive's really good. No worries from the positive at all. This would have been pretty cheap to make. And it looks like they uh, had, you know, something on the case ready to go for something else. Really, what's that? Oh, that's a set button, is it? Is that a button at the back? Looks, that looks to me like another button. If that's if that front thing's a button, that's another button there. So I can probably push. Oh, interesting. Mm, was this designed in such a way that you used to push the whole thing? I do have an instruction book. I could find out, but I'm not going to. Just, just get on with our tests. Right, soldering iron's now warmed up. I'm going to tin our battery ends. Mm -mm, that one's fine. Already tinned. Let's tin this terminal. Yeah, that's that doesn't want to play ball. Just holding the soldering iron on it for a while, just to sort of get some heat into it. <sighs> the smell. Some interesting fumes going on there. Come on now. That's amazing. I'm holding that with my fingers and it's not even getting hot. And the soldering iron's at 347 degrees. It's like a heat sink. It's like designed to, to be a heat sink almost. It's that good. 
where does that go? Well, looking at the circuit here, it does go there. So we might get better luck soldering here. And the positive is this end connection here. A bit of a sizzling sound. I think that's our uh, cleaner evaporating. It's okay. Just as Sir Clive intended. So the first thing I'm noticing is nothing on the screen. So let's just do a sanity check, check for power. Two point six volts. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I mean, it, we, we've, it might well need the full three, though. I mean, that's something that's fair to assume. Double check everything. Oh, positive lead came off. Right, let me rehook this up with something a bit more substantial. Right, so it's up to the bench power supply now at 2.99 volts. Let's just measure that here, see what we've got here. Yep, 2.99 volts. Hmm. Still pretty dead. It's not measuring any current well. Maybe like 2 milliamps, but I don't think it ever goes less than 2 milliamps on there. I can just gingerly turn it around onto its backside. Let's put that down there, weigh it down. So we should be measuring our, let's call it 3, shall we? 3 volts from here. Yes, we are, 2.99. I'm just pushing some buttons down. I just want to see what happens when you push the buttons. You don't, um, I'm not seeing anything on the screen at all, sort of changing in terms of volts. And on the uh, power supply, there's no current difference at all whatsoever. I'm guessing that's why that cap exists in the circuit. It's a real, it's a real shame though when you see this sort of thing because it's like it's so tricky now. I don't know where to start with that, so I'm gonna have to see if I can pull up a data sheet and uh, again try to identify even what the sort of this component is here. It's very interesting. Um, yeah, it's so Billy. I'm guessing you said it was doing something. I can't get it to do anything right now. So continuing experimentation with this, it didn't really, I, I, I spoke to uh, the owner and it most definitely came on when you used to push one of the buttons and when you push one of the other buttons it would go off. So what I decided to do is just sort of dismantle it a little bit further. So they've got these sort of interesting button modules which you can see you have press on contact here that you just push on so they're you know, reasonably serviceable. Because I really just wanted to get get the whole thing off this plastic carrier and basically get the PCB out. So we can just have a quick check behind the board just to make sure there's nothing, you know, funky going on there. Just gonna grab that. It's a bit held on with a bit of sticky stuff. I can tell feel that, but there we go. I think it's out. Get that away. Yeah, it's looking pretty good though, isn't it? I mean it's a bloody dog's dinner. But I can't see too many problems with that. It does look all right. Can you imagine having to make this, assemble it, and work, figure out what's going on? It's kind of horrible, isn't it? So what we'll do, now we've sort of even further apart, we'll just take out the button. It's almost like we're putting it together now from kit form. <laughs> We're going to put these contacts together. It's 
So those contacts look like they're something that could kind of go a bit dodgy with age. And that's it, that's the Sinclair mess. So I've got some crocodile clips from my bench power supply. Again, ridiculously short bench power supply lead. Um, before I hook that up, what I'm going to do is just hook that up to my meter. Better safe than sorry. It's going to be hard to get spare chips for this thing. If not absolutely impossible. They're probably unreliable back in the day when they came out. So we've got 2.9 volts. So we're pretty happy with that. So we've got the positive end, which is this. I'm just going to turn off the power supply because you know these things are a bit weird and a bit glitchy, sensitive. So we'll just plug that in there. So now it's it's kind of upside down. But but there, you know, that's it. That's everything. I'm going to turn that on. Nothing. But then I say nothing. I think you're supposed to push the buttons to make the actual screen come on. No joy, no joy at all. So I think this is the button that was on the front, this one right here. So if we just short that out there like that, if you've pressed press the illuminate button, you'd hope to see something appear on the screen. But yeah, we're not getting anything. So I think it could be a case, and I'm looking at the current drawer, it's absolutely nothing. of going back and just the best I could do is probably study this PCP and try to uh, look at any junction or via where there could be a bit of corrosion but frankly it's not bad I mean the only ones that I can't really tell are those under the chip but I just noticed something there is a, a timing quartz timing crystal there what we can do is just gently bend this back so we can expose that part of the board a bit easier. I'm going to clip our battery leads again, our bench power supply onto here. It's set to a very low current by the way this bench power supply. It's got a current limiter on it and it's pretty much on its minimum so we don't want it to do anything. There we go. So we've got that going and I've got a multi, um, an oscilloscope rather than the multimeter next to me and you're going to hear that come on. It's not going to be massively interesting to you because I'm not going to show you the screen because it's just there. It's kind of for me not to. But the uh, power supply is on. I'm just going to do a sanity check by holding these up. No, 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 nothing going on. So let's touch across some of these crystal. Nothing on that one. Nothing much on that one. And nothing much on that one. And what I'm going to do, hold that down right there. Let's see if I can get anything on my scope. Mm. Absolutely nothing. So that's not good. Not good at all. So it doesn't look like the crystal's going to just just going to be that kind of manual effort now just going through from the power and seeing what we got any at any sort of point really so let's put our probes the right way around so we can get to see something sensible it's looking at the PCB there and we'll zoom in on it let's start some random places so we should be getting Three volts here and we do look we do get three volts there although to be honest it is a bit uh, twitchy isn't it it's not a nice clean three volts there we go Back to three volts there on our crystals two volts there 1.1 volts Again, two volts there. So we're getting power at some of the circuits. There does seem to be some corrosion there, but I don't think it's a particular problem. So I'm going to stop the video and just keep buzzing through, and I'll 
come back in a moment if I find it. So getting desperate here, I've removed the actual crystal and it's sort of separated disc thing here that you can see there. And underneath there is some green goo. It's the only sort of place left apart from under the chip where corrosion could be hiding. So I'm sort of tackling it there in the hope, hope that's going to solve the problem. Again, I'm kind of like a little bit worried about this because again, it's supposed to be, I've been working and it's not now. So I'm kind of more, more encouraged to fix it and get it going. So if this doesn't work, the only other two things left to sort of try are underneath the chip and underneath the sort of screen where you've got your little um, LED module. So I'm kind of less inclined to want to uh, mess with those, but you never know, we might have to. But be very cautious, of course. Right, I'm gonna solder that back on and see if it's made a difference. Let's just clear out clean the gunk off this because this is a bit gooey. It's really weird, the actual legs on that crystal are crazy thin too, they're not like a normal component leg, so you have to be a bit cautious with that, it's going to be slightly tricky to get that back in. I'm not sure if it's sort of compatible with any you know modern crystals we can get, so I don't really want to abuse it. So just wiping that off, it seems quite clean. Um, it did come out in a particular way, but I'm not I'm not sure if there's any directionality to this, but I'll put it exactly the same way it came out. It looks quite interesting though, it's like a little potted can, but what's in the can? Mmm, orangey. Get this back into place. So we've got two options here really. We could actually just try to solder in and leave the existing solder or clean out those holes. I guess I'm gonna have a go at cleaning those out. We have the equipment, we might as well, soldering lines on. Let's do it from the back. So it's this underneath this green wire. This one just here to the side of it. Yep, I can see daylight through both of those. And so can you. Right there, hopefully, somewhere. So, get that spacer on. It does line up rather nicely. And then the can. I'm going to, again, I'm going to put it on the way I took it off, but it's got exceedingly thin legs. I mean, I, I don't know if you can see them right there, even on the camera, but exceedingly thin. If Mr. Kipling made legs, he would make exceedingly fine legs. Just checking them for alignment. They're a little bit curly. Let's straighten them a touch. And then get that in there. I think there's just too much going on here, isn't there? Too much going on. Something needs to be gripped. Right. Okay, bend those in ever so slightly. Apparently they made this as part of it's part of the kind of black watch set they had and uh, that's correct and it's tricky to show in the camera and I do apologize if it's out of focus but I really don't have enough hands to get this perfect so I've got to just do it as best I can um, and apparently they had a lot of returns on those and I'm not sure why I think if they were selling this as a kit I can pretty much short see why. I don't know what amount of assembly was required as part of that kit, but if it was anything, you know, like putting together any of these small components, I think the opportunity for screwing up would have been pretty high. Right, so 
just trying to keep this can in place. These wires really are absolutely hair thin. I can just about see them. Poking through there. And there's the can. It's a very fragile construction, it really is. If you're if you're pushing on this with your finger, just be careful because if you just put the wrong amount of pressure, I could see you would bend them over and damage them. Okay, so that's the cannon. So the other thing I've uh, detected is some of the switches are a bit naff, the buttons. But I'm not really sure how good they're supposed to be, how clean. So let's hook our power wires on in the right place. I didn't change that cap yet because I couldn't find one of the correct value. Okay, so now we are on. <gasps> look, 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 look. Hey, look at that. Oh, that is not bad, eh? 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Look at that. Twenty. Seems to be a digit out though. Thirty. Oh, it just went off. What's going on? What's going on? Should be okay. I don't see any reason for it to suddenly stop working. Oh, it's flashing there. Do you see it there? Ah, there's a flashing one there. It might be in some sort of setting mode, I suppose. Let's try turning it off and then on again, shall we? Off, on again. Saw it there briefly, look, there you go, zero. Good. Right, I'm going to see if I can start getting the pieces to assemble it all back together because we'll need to accumulate a few more bits and bobs because we did uh, take off the tape and stuff as we just... This is probably not the jump cut you were expecting. And uh, I have to say, this is some months later since I filmed that earlier footage that you've uh, just been watching. And you can see I've got the whole micro quartz still in the box. And that's because I popped it. Yeah, I... I've totally, totally ruined it. And it's only taken me this long to actually come back to it and, and sort of assess really where I went wrong and where I uh, need to go now on this. Uh, because of course, this is not my my unit. So this is the uh, Sinclair Micro Quartz and you will notice that there's no panel on the uh, screen here. And I'm just looking in the box, it should be in here. There's basically a lens, uh, I think it's, it's, yes. There's basically a lens that goes over the LEDs. And what I noticed was there was something not quite right with the LEDs in there. And uh, it, was, it wasn't a major issue. It was like one part of one segment was out. But I was like, okay, looks like I need to just sort of get in there and have a quick, quick go, maybe clean it, repair it, something like that. So as I was sliding my knife in here to make that wafer thin adjustment, I don't really, I don't really recall now what went wrong. But basically, I, I destroyed it. I destroyed the screen, and I'll show you how the screen works at least, so we can, you know, some some use can come out of this. And I try to hold it as close to the camera as possible, with it still being able to focus. And it's probably about there. So what you'll see there is four seven segment uh, LED panels and they're really cool. They're basically a sort of integrated circuit LED panel. Remember, they're quite small. You can see my finger there. And what they do, they're, they're basically emulating the standard sort of you know, segments like you get in one of these, but just on a tiny scale. You can sort of see them side by side there on the sort of size difference. And 
How they uh, operate is that they've got uh, some sort of common uh, cathode or anode and you see all these lines. These lines are multiplexing across what you see in each screen. So it'll basically set these pins high or low as required to say make the digit on here and then multiplex this one to show you the one for example. And then it'll go from here to here, it'll multiplex them to the second digit and then while it's doing that transition it will change the um, pattern here to give you the next digit which could be a 2 and then another one which would be a 3, 4 and it, it zooms around zzz, zzz, like that and that's how you get your display. And these are actually bonded to the IC, these are, you can see back here, you can see the common parts of these uh, little integrated LED circuits there and then these are the data lines effectively. Um, and you can see how these, these would have been bonded with little tiny wires that go from here to here, here to here, here to here, here to here, here to, and, and that's be repeated across all of them. And that's what you get underneath those black blob chips in things. And that's essentially it. And you get them in IC. So when you see a chip on something, um, you know, a chip on any sort of device that you've got lying around, in, internally, that could be how it's done, or effectively that's how it's done. So when you go in and you destroy these microwires, which are often made of gold or some sort of precious metal, um, then you're basically scuppered because how do you solder anything back? You need to solder from one of these tiny little contacts here onto there and you can just about see them under the visible eye. Um, and I did have a little look because I thought, okay, I'm going to repair this. I'm going to get myself a machine to do this. And the machine to do it's like five grand. So, so far I've not been able to sort of work out um, how to repair this. The other option I had was these, these screens are relatively standard or used to be and they used to be quite common. You could get them for like a few quid, a couple of quid each. Um, these are you know, LED drivers on their own and then what I could do is remove this or at least solder into the existing part here and then glue a separate screen because there's plenty of meat in this case to take that. Um, but at the moment I'm trying having great difficulty finding one at a reasonable price because although they were massively cheap, I think it was a Hewlett Packard screen, um, loads of hipster people who want their um, LED type watches and Nixie tube type crowd have bought them all up and now they're just they're non-existent anymore. So uh, if you have a source for these let me know um, or maybe an old busted Sinclair calculator that you wouldn't mind parting with let me know on that. Um, anything which is using these four digits has got a good chance of working um, and you'll see them because they have some of these calculators have two banks of four in them so they're basically using two of those modules if you're lucky there'll be one in existence if not if you know of a Sinclair Microquartz going cheap I'm all up for buying that because I need spare parts to fix Billy Sarstad's destroyed destroyed Sinclair Microquartz and uh, I have to say I'm not I'm not really going into the full depth of the story but um, there's a point where you do something and you just think to yourself, FFS, why did I do that waffer thin up? I could have just left it and everybody would be happy. But just there's a point sometimes where you just got to stop and uh, you bulldoze straight through that and you destroy something that's pretty rare. So there, that's where I am with that project. Hope it's been of some use to you so far. Just don't do this last step and uh, continue to enjoy your calculators and obviously clocks. As ever, everybody, thank you so much for watching.